Hello everyone. Are you there? I am so sorry. I'm here. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? Let me know. Um, I was so frazzled. I don't have my microphone plugged in. Nothing. Um, and my call recorder. Oh, snap. I'm sharing my screen. Ha ha ha. That's funny. Hey guys, can you see me? <laughs> now you can see, um, you know, things were kind of crazy. Thank you guys for sticking it out an extra five minutes. I'm sorry we were late. Let's get rolling. Welcome to TVC Live. I'm so excited you guys are here. We are late, um, so let's just get into it. I was already chatting with you guys in, t in the comments. So let's get into it. Um, <laughs> we're going to do this fun little segment called Check Out That Rig. Last week we did um, In the News, and this week I actually had two two really awesome rigs that were sent to me. Well, awesome, they were kind of crazy. So I just wanted to show you guys. These were sent to me by one of our um, virtual campers. Her name's Brittany, and she saw this in Georgia. Can you guys see this? Oh my gosh, it's crazy, right? It's like a Jeep Grand Cherokee or something that's like half Woody Wagon with a built-in camper on the back. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, right? Can you guys see that? <laughs> and then um, I'm just going to kind of move quickly since we were late. And now look at this one, you guys. It says poor white trash on it. And it's one of those old Toyotas, I think, um, RV. O-U-R-V-I-E actually has one of these. I think they're selling it. Um, Johnny says, would that pass the 10-year rule? A rule? I would say probably not. What do you guys think? <laughs> That's really funny. Um, so this one I just thought was hilarious. I got that sent in a text message last night from Brittany, and I actually got a new phone, so I didn't even know who it was, but I just thought it was so funny that someone saw this and said, oh my gosh, I have to snap a pic um, to send to Liz. So what do you guys think about this rig? <laughs> Someone says, uh, my friend calls hers the prehistoric prevost. Love that. Um, and then I think here was another view of it. It says, uh, tips for pics. So apparently if you stop at a gas station or something and you want to take a picture, it might be acceptable to give this poor white trash uh, vehicle <laughs> some tips for gas, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought that was really funny and a great way to start the show, kind of lighten it up, especially... Um, I know I'm talking really fast because we are um, running a little late. But how are you guys? Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in TVC Live Episode 2. Tonight we have um, Luann Street, and she is from Where the, St Where the Streets Wander. And her last name is Streets, and I just thought that was so clever, their website. And I have to tell you, the very first time I saw Lu Luann was obviously online. She was in the same kind of blogging Facebook group as me and I saw her Pinterest pin and I thought, wow, that looks really professional. Who is this lady? And I clicked through and I saw her blog and I just thought, wow, this lady knows what she's doing. It took me, uh, you know, two years of blogging and my website still doesn't look as professional. And I just, you know, I read through her resources. I kind of got to know her online a little bit through that Facebook group. And I just thought, wow, like what an incredible resource this woman is putting together on her website. So if, if you haven't gone to their website, um, it's streetswander.com. And Luann and her husband are just an incredible wealth of knowledge. And Luann's exper expertise is travel planning. And if you know anything about me, I've been traveling the last year. And it has been hell on wheels. There, I said it. I admitted it. <laughs> hell on wheels. And I know part of that has been because I don't travel plan. As you guys know, um, I work a lot on the virtual campground. I'm writing blog posts. I'm, you know, launching products. Full-time Freedom Week was this huge thing that I had been planning for about six or seven months before it actually launched with my partners. And so travel planning just always kind of fell to the wayside. And my husband was the same. He was either working as an RV mechanic in the park, you know, people just knock on your doors all random hours of the day, and then you go. And so it was always the last thing on our list. And it was the one thing that caused us so much stress when we were traveling full time. Um, you know, we'd hop in the rig, it's travel day, we put the slides in, we hook up the car, and um, now what? Where are we going tonight? <laughs> you know, like, 
I pray Walmart lets us stay there, right? Um, so when I saw Luann and her travel planner, I just knew um, I couldn't be the only one with this incredibly large problem. So without further ado, let's bring on Luann. Hey, Luann, how you doing? Hey, great. Thanks for having me, Liz. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks of course. For the kind words. That's really nice. Oh, yeah, of course. And we can hear you. We can see you. You guys can sure. hear her, right? I can hear her. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you guys. Or thank you so much for coming on. And it's so true, Luann. You are just, to me, you just came out of nowhere. And I guess, you know, in the RV niche, there's, everyone has a handle, right? Everyone has a blog or whatever. Of course, because it's so fun to share your travels. But it's yeah. really unique. When I clicked on your site and I read your stuff, I saw your planner. It was just so unique that you were like a lady with a plan and you were here to bring it to the people. And I love that. That's what the virtual campground is all about, helping other people. So I knew I had to have you on episode two, baby. So you knew you were at the top of my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so um, everybody knows my RV story. Um, what's yours? Okay. Well, back in 2013, we bought our first RV on a whim at Camping World. Um, never even dreamed we could, number one, afford it. Number two, what are we going to do with it? You know, um, but then we just fell in love. We started using it every weekend and we took a vacation in it. And on that 18 day vacation, we realized, wow, we could, we could live this way. Like this is, this is really cool. Um, so when we came back home, we started brainstorming. How can we do this? How can we get on the road? We're not retired. I'm still working, earning an income. How, how can I make this transition to the road? Um, so we set a goal. We got on the road in, in about a year um, and started remote work and started our blog. And so now we travel um, full time, work remotely, and um, we're wandering the streets. <laughs> I love that. See, like, what a cool last name, right? Like, I can't do a play on words. And I used to, my maiden name, actually, I know everyone is like, Liz Wilcox is Liz Cole. And I always thought that was so boring. So when I got Wilcox, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm Liz Wilcox, right? And so I feel like if my name was Street, oh, my gosh, all the things I would do with that. <laughs> so love the domain name. That definitely caught my eye. <laughs> but that's a little oh, off topic. <laughs> that's okay. Um, that's okay. So travel planning, obviously I just shared a little bit of my story where it always fell to the wayside. There was always something else to do. And I mean, even we just traveled from Alabama to Tampa and we knew we were leaving for six weeks and, you know, even having someone like you as my friend and colleague, I, I still didn't travel plan. I still... You know, we were literally driving down 75, and we were like, where are we going to sleep tonight? Like, we pray Camping World doesn't have a gate, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so how did you get into travel planning, and, you know, how did it become a passion of yours, so to speak? Well, first, firstly, our motorhome's pretty large, so we're not as whimsical as... Some people with smaller rigs can be. So we we tend to plan really ahead. Um, we tend to travel on more of a budget. I don't like to spend a lot of money on RV parks if we don't have to. So planning ahead helps you, you know, kind of budget better and have I'm a like, better. I'm like, preach. Now she's speaking my language. You guys, listen up. Listen up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the real impetus of how we got started even making the planner in the first place was I had um, – developed a campground reservation log and that is a free download on our website and and that came out of our own travel planning struggle we were brian would call the campground and he'd make the reservation and then i'd say well what's your cancellation policy what if we want to go here instead because you know you still want to have some sort of spontaneity we're rving you know totally. like we want to be free i mean the whole reason we do this is so we can be location independent and and travel where we want to go um amen so, see you guys this is why i love luann she's just so i like everything she says i'm like preach yep totally <laughs> all right go on sorry <laughs> okay so but I, he would make the reservation and I would ask him questions. 
well, what's the daily rate? What's the monthly rate? Should we stay longer to save money? Should we stay here and go there? Like all these options. Does it have a, you know, if you're going to a nice one, does it have a hot tub? Do, do they, you know, what's the pet rules? So we developed the campground reservation log so that you can call the campground and answer all the questions all at one time and not have to keep calling the campground back and then record on there whether you've made the reservation or not. It's a great comparison tool. So you can check out if you're going to a place and there's four or five campgrounds that you have to pick between. You can do that. So okay. once we developed that, then it kind of took on a life of its own. We were like, okay, so how how can we go farther? So, yeah. So then we developed the travel planner and just kind of it. That was the cornerstone was the campground reservation log, because as RVers, we're every night is in a campground or camping boondocking right, yeah, whatever yeah, of course well you're i mean you're parking your rig somewhere right so right, right um you're rving um somebody let's look at these comments so um apparently not everyone can relate as hard as me to the non-traveling someone says uh Liz, it gives us anxiety to think about all your non-planning. <laughs> uh, my friend Melissa says, it gives me anxiety too, Liz. All right. All right, you guys. Um, and then Trekker says, Liz, your tagline for the show should be, we're a little off topic. Uh, I agree. That's a really, that's a really good idea, actually. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. All right. So I know, um, you have a post actually on my website, and this is something that you preach all the time. And I think as new RVers, um, I know that comment from Unknown Normal and the Trekkers with the tagline, they actually just hit the road, and they're doing this really awesome um, 100, it's the 100th year anniversary for Michigan State Park, so they're visiting all state parks mm -hmm. or something like that. So anyway, they're, you know, they just hit the road. I know there's common mistakes for planning, so can you share some of them and maybe even some tips on how to overcome them? Sure, sure. Um, so you're going to have to prompt me because the, the slides, are we going to do the slides or? Oh, yeah, actually, I didn't upload those. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're a little off topic, people, all right, all right, all right. Um, because... Well and but I'm yeah, I can pull them up after our little problem. Yeah, after so. our problem, you guys, I accidentally forgot to upload the slides, but I can pull them up. So you just go ahead with the first one, and then if okay. I need to prompt you, I will. <laughs> okay. Well, just just to be clear, every one of these things that we're going to talk about today is a result of when we took that 18 day trip. And we actually went up to Prince Edward Island. And so every one of these rules that I now write about, we broke and learned from. So this is all from experience. So um, the first one is driving um, too many miles in a day. So if you're taking off in your RV, I mean, how many of you know that you, you're not as swift and fast as you are in your car? I mean, you can do a 10, 12 hour day in a car and get from A to B and you're going to be tired, but you're not totally wiped out and exhausted. Um, and in RV, you travel slower. Um, it takes longer to get fuel. It takes longer to pull off the road and get, you know, take a break and, you know, eat and all the things that you have to do while you're traveling. You're just not as fleet footed. So we broke those rules and planned over 500 mile days in our RV and we're just wiped out at the end of the day. And, you know, that's just not a good a good feeling to be so tired that you can't even enjoy the RV park when you get there. It's just this feeling of, Oh, I, I'm just exhausted. So um, I encourage new RVers to set a mileage limit for the okay. day that you're not going to exceed 300 miles, 350 miles. And that's usually what, when I talk to other RVers, that's what they say. Their comfort zone is about, you know, six hours of driving, um, and th 300 to 350 miles a day to be comfortable and enjoy the lifestyle. Um, if you aren't trying to get from A to B and you want to push it farther, that's, that's fine. Right. Except that I think if you're day to day to day, you can't be traveling right, like that and enjoy what you're doing. Right. That's not sustainable. So, uh, no. quick, quick off topic story. Well, I think it's very on topic and this is, um, 
probably, you know, like a testament to this rule, you know, don't drive too many miles in a day. So um, when we first hit the road, we were headed to the RV Entrepreneur Summit in Fredericksburg, Texas. We were in Alabama. And I was so excited to see my friends, right? <laughs> and I said, oh, we've got to get there. And Ed was in the military, right? So he had a very, you know, strict background where, you know, if this is if this is what we need to be doing, then, you know, we've got to do it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So we drove 900 miles in 48 hours with, wow. a, with a child that had just turned three years old. We arrived to the Entrepreneur Summit, you know, right uh, right as my friends did. It was our anniversary, and our wedding anniversary, and we were not speaking. I wanted to die. <laughs> and I wanted the whole ship to go down, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, I, of course, I was like, ooh, my friends. But by the time we got there, I felt so deflated. I felt, I mean, this is probably slightly dramatic, but I just felt so powerless. Like we had just powered, powered, powered through this, uh, you know, these 900 miles. And, you know, my husband wasn't speaking to me. I definitely didn't want to talk to him. My kid wasn't talking to me. <laughs> she wasn't talking to my husband. Um, you know, I just felt so deflated. And I thought to myself, kind of like your, to your point, you know, this isn't what it's about. Why do I feel so crappy? Um, and I just, you know, of course, luckily I was at the summit and everyone said, you know, Liz, that's kind of crazy. Don't ever do that again. You should set a mileage. <laughs> so that's just a story, like a testament to when you hit the road, you know, you might be excited. You might have made commitments. Oh, I'm going to be here by a certain point. I'm going to meet these people I haven't seen in a million years, whatever. But honestly, it's so important to set those set that mileage, set that time. And it might take you a minute to, you know, kind of figure it out. Um, Luann saying, you know, 300, 350. Excuse me. I try not to go over 250. And that is my absolute limit, um, especially with a child and a husband that, um, sorry, Ed, suffers from road rage. <laughs> so that is our absolute, absolute um, limit. 150 miles is our sweet spot. Uh, it feels really good, but, um, yeah, that was, that's my horror story. Go on. And I did yeah. pull up the yeah. slides. Um, people can't see them, but I can. So I know okay. your next I, one. I got mine too. So we're good. Oh, okay. We're good. okay. <laughs> All right. We're so, covered. Keep rolling. So the, the number <laughs> tip is number one mistake that is or number two mistake is not planning ahead Liz so so we're going to talk about that one see so, this is why this is why she's here guys it's for me not for you <laughs> full disclosure especially if you don't plan ahead and you want to go to some of these places where every RVer wants to be the beach the mountains you know the the really cool places um you're not going to get a reservation. I mean, I don't know about you, but have you noticed how much RVing is just increasing in popularity? People are out there. They love this lifestyle. It's a great, great way to enjoy your life and, and live this way. And so not planning ahead, especially for those really nice places like Niagara Falls or going to the beach, going to the Outer Banks, going to the Keys. I mean, you can't touch the Keys without a cancellation. So unless you plan ahead and and then the other part of planning ahead is you may plan a year from now to go to the Keys, but if you don't have a travel planner or a, a place where you're recording your reservations, you're going to forget you had that reservation and then you're not going to get your deposit back. So those are, those are all some things to think about when you think about planning ahead. That's is, a good, that's a good point. Um, to, you know, if you are one of those people that is like, Liz, oh my gosh, the anxiety level I'm having right now. <laughs> um, yeah, if you do make those reservations ahead, you might forget. There's, I mean, we, over the summer, like you said, we wanted to go to Cape Cod, all these popular places. So, of course, we made them in advance. And even, yeah. okay, so even we were trying to go to Orlando, actually, to see Melissa, who is in the comments. And we, 
it was last minute. Of course, we could only make a reservation for five days, wherever, and it was in Orlando. And then we decided last minute to change our minds. We were going to stay another month in Alabama. I forgot to cancel that reservation. I felt terrible because it was such a popular spot in Orlando, Thousand Trails, Orlando, at Christmas time. Um, and they actually called to, you know, confirm the reservation the night before. And I said, oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> uh we're not coming. So I could, I yeah. like wasted that reservation. So, you know, if it's in the, you know, you might lose your deposit and you also might be taking up that spot for someone else. So right. that's a really right. good point. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good RV etiquette, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, so <laughs> that's what I need to add. I have a post written by a guy named Dick Carlson and it's like Dick moves from other RVers. <laughs> I think that's probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, TTO. All right. So uh, what's uh, next? So the next one's not checking the weather. So um, living this RV lifestyle, we, from experience, are just kind of in our own little world. You know, sometimes you're not always, we're, we're not in touch with the news anymore. You know, in your old life, you'd maybe watch the news or catch it as you were getting ready for work in the morning or you know, you have traditional TV on in the background doing whatever and you might catch the weather. At least that's how it was for us. Well, now that we're RVing, we have to be very intentional about checking the weather. Um, right now, we're in Asheville, North Carolina, and any minute, I mean, it snowed last night in the northern part of the county. And so getting places, you know, and not being prepared for the weather can be a problem, especially if you're going to start traveling. Um, so... If you have the option and you check the weather and you can not travel because it's, you know, a storm, a front or whatever's coming in or even bigger than that, hurricanes, blizzards, tornadoes, you know, you might be in a tornado zone. Um, those are just good common sense things to do that, before, especially before travel day, is make sure that you aren't going to be caught in some big monsoon as you're trying to get your rig down the road and then have to set up and terrible place, you know, wet and dirty and all that stuff. So planning ahead, checking the weather. That's a, another good tip. All right, you guys. People are like sad face emoji in the comments about my stories. But I will tell you guys, this one I've got covered. Okay. I checked the weather. And by I, I mean Ed. Ed checks the weather. <laughs> He's obsessed with it. So uh, luck luckily, um, that one's covered because I don't even have a weather app. I never check the weather. I'm I'm that guy that's like, look outside. What are these people doing yeah. with weather apps? But yes, I think with RVing, that one I do have. So one for Liz. <laughs> good, good. Yes, ask Ed. Right, ask Ed. What's yeah, the weather? When in <laughs> I always tell people there's no there's no way in heck I would ever RV without Ed. You know, as much, I'm sure if you're watching, Ed, I know I give you a lot of slack or <laughs> flack. I do love you and you have made my dreams come true. All right, go on. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, the next one is not stopping before dark. So how many times have you pulled in an RV park after dark and tried to back in and then had words between the two of you? trying to park the rig in the dark and be safe about it. So that is another another tip that I like to share because we we've had I call it marital bliss over backing up the RV in the in the dark and trying to get it in the in the place after dark and we're struggling to get parked and then you're hungry because it's after dinner and you're trying to park it possibly in a tight spot. I mean, you don't know where you're always going to end up and what the lot's going to, a spot's going to look like that you're going to back into or pull into or, you know, anything like that. So, you know, having that, getting there before dark, part of that is going back to not driving too many miles in a day, enjoying the journey, enjoying your days, that, that traveling is part of that day and then but the other part is parking setting up maybe meeting your neighbors grilling out so arriving after dark doesn't doesn't help you in those situations it only makes it more stressful 
So yeah, that, it's yeah. it really does. There's just something about it. I mean, even if you have a smaller rig in a giant spot, it feels like you just missed the whole day. Kind of like, I love that you just mentioned that about, you know, grilling out or meeting your neighbors. I mean, that's one of the things that the common themes that always comes up when I talk to people. Oh, I just love the community, right? Even if you're, you know, boondocking, there's something about RVing that you love and you really do miss that out if you spent all day traveling and then you arrive in the dark, you have to hook up or even, you know, just try to level yourself, whatever it is, whatever the situation may be. Um, it just stresses you. I mean, I would know people. Trust me, we parked in the dark. <laughs> um, yep. Yep. It's just so stressful. I can't tell you guys how many times we've done that where it's like, oh, we're just going to go 30 more miles. We get to a place where we thought we could just park overnight. We can't. And we have to drive another 30, 40, 50 miles. And by the time we got there, not only is it dark, we're in a parking lot and it's crooked. And again, we go to bed without talking to each other. <laughs> so Luann is basically a marriage counselor. So you guys need to listen to her. <laughs> no, we've just all experienced the very same thing. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just something about it that you know, you feel like you're in a rush because it's dark, you've got to make dinner, or you've got to go to bed, you know, whatever it is, you've got to back up. I mean, I guess that would be the most important thing I'm not even mentioning is just having to back up or do that tight spot, things like that. It's just, yeah, it's, it's not fun. No, it's not fun at all. Keep preaching, sister. That's right. <laughs> All right. So the next one is not using an RV GPS. So um, that is another tip that I highly recommend for all RVers, not just the newbies. If you're just trying to navigate by Google Maps, you're doing yourself a disservice because someday you're going to come up to a bridge that you're too heavy for. You're going to come up to an overpass that you're too tall for. And what are you going to do? If you're pulling a toad, you can't back up. If you're on a dolly, you can, you know, but still you're in traffic. Like people are behind you and you can't go under the overpass. I mean, there's this YouTube video that I have on, on one of my blog posts that talk about all these travel things that travel mistakes. Um, and I mean, it's this one, I think it's in North Carolina somewhere. And I mean, the people just hit it all the time. And this is an, an exceptionally low overpass, but it kind of puts the fear of God in you where you're like, oh, I need to plan and not get on those roads where this could potentially happen. So an RV GPS will prevent you from doing those things, crossing the bridges that you're too heavy for. I know we're a pretty big rig. We're pretty heavy. So um, we've actually been on some more country roads that the bridges cannot support our weight. And that would be really bad if you end up in a in the lake or the river. I mean, that would be terrible. Oh, my uh, gosh. Look at my face right now. I never even <laughs> thought about that. Yeah. But that's I mean, so... Ooh, look at me. You guys, like the weight of the world is on my shoulders right now thinking about what, what like, what could I possibly do? <laughs> like, what would you do? That's so, yeah, we, ex here's another story, <laughs> Liz Wilcox story, Tra travel planning disasters. That should be my next book. <laughs> It'll sell like hotcakes. <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. we were leaving the northeast region headed to Pennsylvania. We have a Class C motorhome. Um, it's just gas. It doesn't have a lot of power, of course. It's 100 degrees out. It's overheating. Of course, we have no, we have no plan. Um, the GPS, we were not using an RV GPS. The GPS was taking us this weird way. It tried to take us into New York City. We knew we did not want to go that way. Um, so, I was, you know, I had my map right here and I'm literally looking and I'm like, just keep turning left, just keep turning left or whatever. And then I look and luckily it was like a good sand map or something and it was telling me there was going to be a toll bridge and I was like, oh my gosh, it doesn't say don't use it. So hopefully we're good. And so we're going through the mountains. We go over the bridge. It's totally fine. But then uh, the GPS kicked back in where it kind of was putting us back on track, except 
when we went to make the right hand turn as we're, we we drove right by a passenger vehicle only sign which if you don't know that means RVs no no <laughs> that means basically you and your Ford Focus maybe your minivan should go down here and of course we're in the northeast so I'm like we're about to ruin our rig low bridges we're going to ruin our rig and the historical value of whatever we hit. <laughs> and um, we're driving and, you know, it's super stressful. Again, one of those moments where Ed and I are barely speaking. We're just trying to get out of this alive. There's nowhere to turn around because we're like, we'll just turn around. There's got to be an emergency U-turn somewhere, you know. And we're like, we're driving and we're driving. And we're like, there's no turnaround. What are we going to do? You guys, do you see the tears? Like just reliving this for the first time since it happened. And, um, ugh, we, we were just driving and I think we were just so stressed out. We didn't even see the bridge until we were underneath it. And thank God, obviously we still have our RV and he looked at me, Ed looked at me and I looked at him. And he said, how low was that bridge? Did you even see that bridge coming? I said, no. He said, me neither. And we just pulled over. We consulted the maps. We looked at, you know, GPS satellite to see if we could continue on until the next exit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you guys, I'm like, <laughs> wish I should have, like, a heart rate monitor <laughs> attached to the screen it's right now. Rapping. And it was even telling the story. I'm, you know, I'm feeling the emotions. And... It was even more so because we are full timers, you know, this is our home and, you know, from lack of planning and miscommunication, like it all went to hell <laughs> real quick. Um, okay. So, yeah, Jamie says gas stress stressing about that bridge. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. Trekker says next week on TVC Live, watch Liz undergo therapy from all her RV anxieties. <laughs> yeah, you guys. That's why, you know, I started the show, this blog, to tell you, like, you know, even me, you know, I'm supposed to be giving you guys advice. I don't know it all, and I will definitely help you learn from my mistakes. So, I think yes. we've gone Thank through you. five. I think there's one left. <laughs> okay. Do we have time? We got to. Yeah, going? I keep going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the last one is planning too many activities at your destination. So, you know, the really cool places that we want to go see and maybe we haven't um, planned enough time to see everything in that, that, or we don't have enough time at a campground let's say we didn't plan ahead we don't have we've only got three days to spend in Williamsburg Virginia well it's really hard to see a lot of things in three days in Williamsburg Virginia if you want to go to the beach if you want to go all these places so when but in order to enjoy your lifestyle you need to just kind of calm down and not try to put everything in like a vacation this is your life. You have, you can do many days. You could plan to come back. You could plan ahead to come back. See what you can do without overstressing, especially you're traveling with children. I mean, there's, it, that's a much slower pace. You can't do everything, see everything. Um, so not planning too many activities. It's another travel planning mistake you can avoid. That's, so. that's actually one thing that I don't have a problem with. I'm not a planner, <laughs> so I never plan. It can also go in the opposite direction, not planning anything and yeah. just feeling like you wasted your money at this nice campground or, you know, why did you, why did you drive 900 miles in 48 hours and now you're just sitting trying to Google what, what there is to do in Williamsburg, Virginia, and then just getting yeah. completely overwhelmed. This can be yeah. tip number seven. <laughs> Only Liz so Wilcox fun. has this problem, maybe. <laughs> um, but well, yeah. It's true. As RVers, though, because so it can go the opposite direction. We think we have all the time. We get there. We don't have a plan. And we end up missing the things that we could. We were right next to because we didn't plan ahead. Yeah. So that's definitely my problem, especially with running a business, having a kid. Um yeah, I I mean, we went to Cape Cod. We were there two weeks, and we went into Cape Cod, so to speak, one time, and we did 
one thing, a duck race or a duck boat race or a duck boat, a duck boat. (laughs) And that's all we, and we had some ice cream. And now I'm like, oh man, I wish I would have gone whale watching. Wait, what? That you can do what there? And I was there two weeks and you know, yeah, I feel, I feel like I wasted opportunity, especially now we're stationary while Ed goes to school for a little bit. I'm like, gosh, I could have done so many awesome things this summer if I would have just planned or written down the things that I knew I wanted to do. And then when I got there, I was so overwhelmed from not planning that I forgot. Um, yeah, so the comments, everyone is um, loving it. Someone said, who was it? It was up here. Kayla said, I wish I would have had all these tips uh, when I hit the road. I literally broke all these rules. <laughs> and they also give a tip to uh, never drive an RV into Chicago because apparently they have really low bridges. So uh, just so you guys know. Um, Techno RV, hey, guys. I feel so cool. They're watching. It says, amen, amen, Luann. There's never enough time to see everything, and then you always feel like you missed out. Um. Melissa says, we were really worried about bridge stuff, and we bought the trucker um, Garmin early on. They love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kimberly says, great tips and insight about the bridge height. I'm a newbie. So, yeah, it's something that you don't really think about in a car. Why would you? You're a car. (laughs) No, and it's really important when you're driving. You need to know how tall you are because when you approach that bridge, you need to do you have confidence that you're going to go under it and not go, wait a minute, am I 12.3 or am I 12.6? In the yeah, bridges? that's so funny you yeah. mentioned that. There was a comment, um, Unknown Normal, who's our virtual spotlight tonight. They said, our first experience with not having a really good RV GPS, they came to a low overpass. And like you said, they weren't sure. Um, so yeah. they literally had to get out, stop traffic, and measure the height of their trailer. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> Especially if there's some 16-year-old in the minivan next to you. Because you know he's putting that on YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> you, know what I'm, you know, you know, you <laughs> know. Um, someone says, oh my, there is never enough time. Um, Techno RV says, when you work on the road, it's really hard to spend time checking an area out. Um, you want to explore. Uh, they say, they say we have to set a time to stop working and make ourselves leave the RV. That can also be a real we challenge for working RVers, too, which, yeah. I mean, it kind of sounds bougie. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I have to stop what I'm doing to go see the Grand Canyon. But it is a real problem, people. It's a real RV problem. It is. Oh, I agree. <laughs> Unknown Normal says people were honking at them about uh, having to stop. But, it's hey, normal. I think that was smart of you. I mean, you could have caused a major accident, and then, you know, those people honking could have been hurt. So I say good on you. So if you don't follow these tips and then you do have that problem, do what they did, and please stop and check. <laughs> good for <sighs> All right, so I know you've mentioned it a couple times. I mentioned it at the beginning. Um, let's talk a little bit about your travel planner. I know you are obviously a guru uh, <laughs> to me in my eyes. Um, so tell us about the travel planner and what it can do for people like me or, you know, people that even, you know, just missed one or two and not all six like me. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, um, we developed the Complete RV Travel Planner for RVers. Um, it's, it, it really is for people who travel, um, frequently and that want to keep track of their campground reservations. So, um, this is the spiral bound version with the tabs. We do have a PDF download that you can download and print yourself. We are working, working on a fillable version of the PDF. That's been a big request. That's not out yet. It takes a lot of work. So we'll let you know when that one comes out, if you're interested, um, our travel planner um, starts with a page for just in case. So you arrive at a, a, a park and if you have medical issues or you have a dog or you need a 24 hour pharmacy, you can record these things on this wet, wet erase um, part of the planner and for the, the time that you're somewhere temporarily. 
Then you have the, the 12 months you go through. You've got a, a month at a time, a, a month so you can plan out your travels. You have a route planning sheet. Um, and then we've taken the campground reservation log and we've condensed it down into um, seven days because if you're traveling every day and you need a reservation for every night or at least a, at least a, um, I guess a destination, even if you don't make a reservation, maybe you know you're going there, you can put the address and, and then you can even mark whether or not you have done, um, made a reservation there, what the cancellation policy is. And over here is where you plan your activities while you're at the places so you don't miss anything. Places to go, people to see, things to do. So you can plan those things out and um, make sure you don't miss that. So this is 12 months. Um, we have some really cool charts in here for RVers. Time zones, I don't know, time zones get me every time. So it's like, what time is it? What time is it here? What time is it, you know, back where my kids are? That's so, so, I, that's so good because even the other day I was on a call and I got off and I said, I looked at my computer and I said, it's only seven o'clock. No, I'm in the wrong time zone on my computer, but I was actually in the right time zone and I had an extra hour and right. I've been here for two weeks. I'm still confused. So yeah, that's yep. definitely a great thing. Um, what else? And then share some of when somebody gets this planner, what are the benefits? How's it going to help them out? Okay. So, well, it's going to help you record all your reservations. You're going to know where you're going. You're going to know what deposits you've put down places so that if you're not going to go there, you can cancel in time, get your deposits back. Um, and so you can plan out your whole year. It can be your diary when you're done of everywhere that you went and all the fun things that you did. The other feature that I like in the back is there's, um, all 50 states have little boxes where when you're sitting around the campfire, virtual or otherwise, and people are talking about Cape Cod and they're like, you should go to that restaurant or see the whale watching. That's so cool there. You can go to that month or that that state and you can write down all the cool things. And then when you get to that state, you can remember what you're supposed to plan when you go there. So I developed that because that was my thing. I yeah, never I love people. that idea. I think it's yeah. so, like, it's so simple, but it's not anything that I saw when you told me about that feature. I was like, wow, that's so beneficial because, yeah, people are always, especially for me with my blog, you know, I get hundreds of recommendations when I'm going, hey, I'm going to be here. Oh, you've got to go sure. do this. You've got to do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to check that out right now. And then I check, you know, I open it up in a tab. And then I okay. get the next email or whatever, and I can't remember. And so it's kind of like this information overload. And so, yeah, just like Cape Cod, I end up, you know, going on a duck boat, you know. So <laughs> I, 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 lo I just love that. I think it's so beneficial because it just gets all these ideas. Of course, we all love traveling. We all have this desire to go out and see things. Um, but we also love to give recommendations. So this gives a nice little place to store it. Um, sure. And if you're interested in getting the planner, can you tell us how much it is? And I know you have an exclusive discount just for virtual campers. Can you tell us yes. about that too? Sure. Okay. So you can go to um, rvtravelplanner.com and you can download a sample. Um, you can also look and see if it's right for you. And then you choose the PDF for the um, spiral. And when you click through, if you want to buy it, virtual campground 10 is your coupon code. You get 10% off either version of the planner. Awesome. Thank you so much. And that yeah. link is in the video description below. And again, yep. the coupon is um, virtual campground 10. So thank you, yep. Luann. Um, we yeah. do have a couple minutes. We might not be able to play the full version, but can, since you are, you know, teaching us how to, I guess, essentially road trip um, responsibly. <laughs> Do you want to play a road trip game with me? Sure. Awesome. So we See, are... How much I fail at it. Well, well whatever. Um, I'm going to cheat and look at the comments. <laughs> um, you guys need to help me out. We are going to play actors and movies. Um, just one of those simple road trip games. Um, I'm going to name an actor or actress and Luann is going to tell me a movie that person is in and then I have to name a second actor and so on and like I said you guys in the comments are totally going to help me crush this right <laughs> um I tried to pick you have help <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
it's my show, lady. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> um, so I think this will be a fun game. We'll just play a few rounds um, since we are running out of time, but I do remember we were five minutes late, so hopefully you guys will stick around. Um, whoops. Let me... Oh, sorry. All right. So let's play. All right. So our first actor is Tom Hanks. Okay. Big. Oh, my gosh. How am I supposed to remember who was in Big? That movie is older <laughs> than I am. Where the generation comes in play here. Big. Uh, it was the lady with the curly hair, right? She, I don't know. You guys, Google it real quick. Well, we're off to a great start, you guys. Nobody in the comments knows. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't know anyone that was in Big except Tom uh -oh. Hanks. All okay. Right. That's fine. Let's move on. <laughs> We've got six here. All right. Diane Keaton. Oh, my. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Everyone says, oh, uh, everyone says crickets. All right. So I will I'll go first. Diane Keaton was in As Good As It Gets. Oh, um, oh. You can't handle the truth, Jack Nicholson? <laughs> yes. Okay, so okay. now I name a movie. Um, Jack Nicholson was in... I'm trying... <laughs> Jack Nicholson was in a lot of things. Uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Did you see that oh. one? It's older. Yeah. yeah uh, it's got yeah. a lot of famous um, people in it. Um, Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> but I don't know the actress. <laughs> who played Nurse Ratchet? Oh my. Nobody Anybody says anything. <laughs> no. Oh. All right, let's move on. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, Dirty Harry. Who was in that? Was Sally Field in that? No, that was another what? one of his movies. She could have been in one of those. Well, let's go with Sally Field. What was she in? <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, Sally Field. Um, the movie where they're driving, Smoking the Bandit. Uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Kurt Russell. No, not Kurt Russell. Burt Reynolds. Cool. Hey, okay. you guys, we made it through a second round on this one. I know, I know. Um, Burt Reynolds. Um, that's probably the only movie I know that he was in. All right. We're moving on. All right. Jodie Foster. Uh, Panic Room. Ooh, uh, Kirsten something or other. The girl from, from that one. No. What's her name, you guys? Uh, she's that terrible actress. She played the little girl. Her name is Kirsten something. Okay, we're going to be at a dead end on that one. All right, and then you could say Twilight, and then I could say... Twilight, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. and then I would say... <laughs> and then I would say uh, Water for Elephants. Or no, the guy's name is... Oh, man, we stink at this, you guys. We are all bad at... Okay, I know the last two we can play, you guys. Come on, I have faith in Luann. I have faith in my audience. Tom okay. Cruise, we can do this one. <laughs> Top Gun. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Who plays his partner? Come on, you guys. Oh, my gosh. All right. Last one, then. Let's do the last one. Where is she? Oh, no. My slides are all messed up. All right. Well, uh, the last one is Julia Roberts. Maybe we can get three rounds. Pretty woman. One. Pretty woman. Uh, Richard Ge Greer. Gear. Whatever his Gear. last name is. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and I can see it. The uh, Officer and a gentleman. Oh, who's the who's the leading lady in that? She wasn't very famous. I can't think of her name. Who else is in it then? But, Somebody says Val Kilmer. I don't know if that's the right. If we're still on the right movie. Oh no, he was he was in um, Top Gun. Top Gun. Okay. <laughs> you guys, I'm glad you guys are laughing because we are like really not good at this. Uh, we, we'll have to do a couple practice rounds next time I play this game. <laughs> But it's kind of cool when you... Uh, well, well, I'm glad you struggled as much as I did. Well, I try, I was trying to pick, like, intergenerational 
actors and actresses, but it still didn't work out in either one of our favors. (laughs) Somebody Googled it probably. Brian says Deborah Winger was the uh, lead. I'm not lost. I'm RVing says it's fun. (laughs) Someone says she had dark hair. (laughs) All right, you guys, thank you so much for playing along in the um, chat. Luann, thank you so much for being here tonight and for sharing that awesome discount and your awesome planner. Um, You don't have to be as extreme as me to have this problem. Um, Luann is great. Her planner has so many benefits for you. It's really going to make life a little easier and you're going to stay out of that Liz Wilcox lane, I promise. So thank you so much, Luann. I hope you have a great night. Thanks. You too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. All right, you guys, it is 8.56 p.m. I know I started a little late, and uh, kind of luckily, we kind of stunk at that game. Um, so we are still on track. I am going to play the virtual spotlight video. It's about 10 minutes, so I hope you stick around for it. It's unknown normal. They are actually in the chat, so if you have any questions as they are um, sharing their RV story with you, um, just pop it in the chat. I'm sure they'd be happy to... Um, answer that. So I'm going to play that right now and then we'll say goodbye. And go. Oh, hey. Hey, Liz. Thank you so much for having us on your virtual spotlights. Um, I'm Leslie. I'm Amy. Uh, uh, we, we go, go by, by the handle, handle Unknown, Unknown Normal, Normal on uh, social, social media. media. We, we are full-time RV nomads. We've, We've been, been on the road for almost a year and a half. And before that, we, we spent about 18 months, months getting ready, ready uh, because, because we had zero RV experience. experience. Yep, 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 yep. So, so neither, neither of us have ever been in an RV before, before. Uh, and we uh, sort, sort of independently started, started seeing things from a couple of RVs who were able, able to sustain themselves on the road, road have a business, business um, um, and be fully remote. Um, and so we came to each other totally independently one day and said, hey, I, one of us said, I, I, I read about this thing, and then the other said, oh, I, I also read about this thing. And we started talking about it, and we got really excited right away, um, and then we spent many, many months doing research. And um, like I said, we had never been in an RV until the first time we went to a show to try and understand the types of RVs and what would fit best for us. I think the most important things for us as far as trying to just understand the right lifestyle for us and the reasons that we hit the road. Um, we He was a teacher at the time. He had been teaching for a while. I had had uh, a job also sort of similar uh, in the education field. And shortly before we started discussing hitting the road, I actually had already been able to convert my job to self-employment. Um, at that point, uh, the business was starting to grow. Andy was already starting to feel a little bit of discontent in some of the situations he was in. Um, so when the RV thing came up, we just decided, uh, hey, what would it look like if you joined me and, and can we make that work and is business going well enough? And turns out it was. So um, through that 18 month period, um, we looked at when should he leave his job? When should he uh, transfer into working with me? And that happened, what, probably like six months before we hit the road? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we had actually planned to not travel, but we wanted to, we were living in Texas and we wanted to leave that area. Um, But the more research we did, uh, the more we found that either, you know, my salary was going to be way lower and cost of living was going to be higher, that sort of thing. So that's kind of like when travel really started to make sense. Why can't we just see many locations, many locations as we want? We had never found a place that felt like home. I think any choice you make is a gamble, but it felt really good. We were really excited about it. Um, And that's, you know, point A to point B. 18 months later, we bought a rig and hit the road. Um, Shortly after that was one of the most terrifying experiences that we ever had on the road. Yeah, Um, as new RVers, um, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, So we picked up the fifth wheel trailer in June and we drove it to an RV park where we parked it for a month. Um, So we spent that month um, really getting to know things, but really what happened uh, was the day we left. Um, So it was hooking up the trailer. Um, So when we first got the thing, um, we 
bought it from a dealership. They helped us step by step hook up everything. Um, they helped us, you know, back up, get the hitch, get everything locked. Um, we left without without a hitch, without any sort of problems, anything like that. Um, and then, of course, we sat for a month, and some of that information got a little bit less fresh. We're the type of people who want to be right on point. We want to make sure that we're doing everything absolutely right. Um, so we go through the whole thing of, of getting everything set up, hitching up the rig, making sure everything inside was was put away and stowed carefully, um, just, just trying to be as careful as possible. Um, everything's put together, everything's ready to go. We're boasting in the truck, we've got the dog in the back, we've got everything ready to go. We look at each other, good? Yeah? Everything's good? We pull away, all of a sudden... Slam a jamma. There's this huge crash. Uh, the trailer came crashing down on the truck. Because we didn't um, have the fifth wheel hitch properly engaged or locked yeah, or yeah. something. Well, yeah, so there, you know, when the, when the, the pin goes into the hitch, it's supposed to lock, and our hitch had some sort of issue where the lever didn't actually lock it in place, but the, the teeth went around the pin, so it looked like it was hitched. And there were and safety mechanisms that told us that it wasn't locked in place. It yep. wasn't like a malfunction. It was just, we, it looked like it was in place, but if we had known or, or, or paid been better a, attention to... A little to, bit more experienced. Right, maybe. exactly. So it looked like the, the teeth had closed and everything was closed, um, and it wasn't. So we pulled away and the fifth wheel just slammed down onto the bed of the truck. It was a terrifying experience. Um, we panicked Yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I panicked more than Leslie. Uh, <laughs> Leslie was actually fairly calm for the whole situation, but um, I, I looked in the mirror, the, the rear view mirror, and just saw the trailer slam <laughs> down, and, and I, I really didn't have words at the moment. I, I was just so shocked and terrified at what had happened, so I kind of jumped out of the truck and just like started pacing around like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and Leslie's just like, okay, we need to figure this out. Here's what we need to do. The <laughs> whole time, because the, the front cap of the trailer is fiberglass, so when it's, it's slammed into the truck, it was cracking, like as we were trying to figure out what was going on. It was like a movie. So it was like when something like that happens in a movie. And, yeah, yeah, and you just hear that creak, creak, creak. Right. And every yeah, second, just there's cracking. just... And you just feel like everything is going to come down. So, so not only was that happening, yeah. we had that creaking going on that just seemed right. to count down until full disaster. <laughs> Pressed on the, the, the jack release buttons to get, get the jacks moving down, to get the trailer off of the truck. Um, but they move at a glacial speed. So um, it was... Just the whole time, the jacks are just and when slowly, you have, slowly going. When the you have that stress, happening. it's so much slower. Uh, but um, we did eventually get the trailer lifted up, but not before the battery died. Yeah, um, that so, was so fun. Yeah, so we had been plugged in for a month, and we hadn't relied on the battery at all. So um, it was a cheap, like, diehard sort of, you know, not the right kind of RV battery. It died while we were trying to get the jacks out, and then again, I flip out. And Leslie says, hey, wait a minute, we can just, just plug, plug the, the RV in, in right? right? And so right. I was like, yeah, of course we can. So we, <laughs> then we just were like in panic mode trying to get this cord out and get the RV plugged in. And uh, so we finally get the RV plugged in. We get the jacks all the way out and everything. We, we get a breath and a sigh of relief. Like, oh my gosh, it's, it's the, it stopped cracking and everything's it's at least, at least okay for, off the for the moment. Truck, um, right? And so then when we try to rehook it, we realize that... Uh, it wasn't the the trailer wasn't high enough to to actually engage the the so trailer. So we had lifted it up enough to be off of the bed of the truck. But if you've ever had to connect a fifth wheel, you know that a lot of times with the height of the truck, you have to lift the thing up higher in order to just get the tongue into the the fifth wheel hitch. So um, we had lifted it enough to to get the weight off, but not enough to actually fit into the fifth wheel hitch. And unfortunately, that was as high as it went. Yes. So we there, fully there are it. there are are extensions that you're supposed to pull out before you let the jacks touch the ground. And we didn't do that because we were so again, panicky, right? Again, we were panicked. We we're new. We didn't know what the heck we were doing. So um, what we had to do was actually put the fifth wheel, like lower it onto the bed of the truck 
which was another sort of terrifying experience. You're but, not supposed to do that. But yeah, so so we get it onto the bed of the truck enough to get you know the the jacks up in the air, and then we could put the extensions down <sighs> and then lift it back up. And all after all that, we we, we did finally get hitched up and leave. We um, we we took a drive. We drove like four hours and yeah, and to the edge up. of Texas. Yeah. But I swear, after that, I had mild PTSD oh, yeah. for six months or more. Every single time we would hitch up, I just kind of panicked. I just knew for certain we had forgotten something. We were going to break something else. Um, fortunately, the damage that was done to the cap was entirely cosmetic. Yucky. We got really lucky. We were able to actually find uh, fiberglass tape. So the whole thing is made yeah. of fiberglass. We found fiberglass tape, which is basically like, like duct tape, duct tape times a thousand, right? Fiberglass. Made out of fiberglass. Yep. Um, and we used, we taped all that up and used that for about a year. Yeah. So I guess moral of the story is that even if you prepare for 18 months like we did, um, you still might not know everything. Yeah. But even if something like that happens, it's not the end of the world. Um, so uh, another thing about being on the road is the community on the road. Uh, the virtual campground that Liz does is uh, a really wonderful resource. Life is hard enough out there on the road and it's hard to find people who are like-minded and doing the same things as you. So having the virtual campground um, has really been good for us um, just to be a part of that community moving forward. I guess the only thing, uh, other thing about us is just who we are. Again, we go by Unknown Normal. Um, Facebook is just slash Unknown Normal. Instagram, it's Unknown underscore Normal. Um, and then we have a, a website, a blog at unknownnormal.com. We wrote a blog about the dropping the trailer, if you're interested. We also have a blog, a recent one, about the entrance claim of getting the cat fixed after dropping the trailer, which we waited a year for and they were mad at us about. <laughs> so don't do that, but also read the blog if you want to know more about the best ways to handle those kinds of things. Uh, I think that about covers it up. All right, cool. Great. Great. Liz, Liz thank, thank you again you. Thank very you. much. We really, really appreciate it, it. and uh, we look forward, look forward to seeing you more. more. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, you guys, was that story not awesome? I heard it uh, yesterday, or I'm sorry, this morning, and I was like, oh my gosh, I knew they had duct tape on their rig, but I didn't know the story behind it. And yes, mom in the comments uh, did a spoiler alert at the end and <laughs> revealed their big duct tape secret. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much. Thanks to Unknown, Unknown Normal. Andy and Leslie, they're in the comments right now. Thank you guys for coming in on the virtual spotlight. Hope to have you guys on the show again. Thanks so much to Luann for coming in and sharing all these tips. Uh, as you probably could tell from all my stories, like these are real obstacles, not something that she made up. I was hella relating to all of them. So I hope, you know, if you found that beneficial, go check out her travel planner. The link is in the description. Remember to use coupon code um, virtualcampground10 to get 10% off. It really is an amazing planner that's going to offer you so many benefits as you're traveling around. Anyway, most of all, big, big thank you to all of you that showed up online tonight. Um, I know I was a few minutes late and um, I'm only a few minutes over this time instead of 90 minutes like last time. So thank you guys so, so much. I am really excited about this new project and I couldn't be doing it without you guys. And thank you for all your ideas, your encouragement, um, your feedback. Um, just love you guys so much. I am really excited about this, and I will see you next week. I am interviewing Pete and Jordan of PeteandJordan.com, and we are going to talk about winter RVing, do's and don'ts, how to do all that. So be sure to tune in next week, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here. All right, you guys, have a great night. <laughs>